Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sukhmeet Bedi and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology. Today we will be talking about the structure of the heart. Now what is heart? It is a part of the cardiovascular system. Now the Greek name, Greek word for the heart is cardia and the Latin word for the heart is cor, C-O-R, cor. So you need to know this because we are going to again and again use cardiac cycle, coronary circulation, so you should know that these are terms related to heart only. Now let's first talk about the size of the heart. Now what is the size of the heart? It is about the same size as the person's closed fist. It's about 12 cm long and 9 cm wide and it's broadest at its broadest end and about 6 cm thick. Now where is it located? The location of the heart. The heart is located in the middle mediastinum that is behind the sternum and the costal cartilages. So what is this term mediastinum? This mediastinum it is the space between the two lungs. Various structures are present in this mediastinum and one of the structure is heart which is located in the mediastinum. Now let's talk about the external features of the heart. The first is the apex of the heart. It is formed by the left and it is located between 5th and 6th ribs. Then second is the base of the heart. At the uppermost part of the heart, it extends upwards, backwards and to the right. And base is the wide upper and posterior margin of the heart. And it has a relatively fixed position because of its attachments to the vessels. But the apex is able to move. Then are the organs associated with the heart. Inferiorly, the apex it rests on the central tendon of the diaphragm. What is diaphragm? Diaphragm is a dome shaped muscle which separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. Then superiorly are the great blood vessels that is aorta, superior vena cava, pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins. Posteriorly that is on the back side of the heart is present esophagus, the trachea, the left and right bronchus, the descending aorta, the inferior vena cava and the thoracic vertebrae. These are all the organs which are surrounding the heart. Then laterally, that is on both sides of the heart are the lungs, this you know. Anteriorly in the front is sternum, the ribs and the intercostal muscles. Intercostal muscles are present between the two ribs. Now we come to the coverings of the heart. The covering of the heart is called pericardium. It is a double walled sac which encloses the heart. It has two layers of fibrous pericardium and a serous pericardium. Now the fibrous pericardium is tough, inelastic, fibrous connective tissue and it is continuous with the tunic adventitia of the great blood vessels. Now what is this tunic adventitia? The blood vessel wall, it is made up of three layers, the tunica adventitia, tunica media and tunica interna. So tunic adventitia is the outermost layer of the blood vessels. So this fibrous pericardium it is con in continuation with this tunica adventitia. What are its functions? First it encloses the heart and it protects the heart against the overfilling. Right? So that it doesn't get overfilled. Only a specific amount of blood enters the heart. Second is it prevents the overstretching of the heart. So once it is not overfilled it will not be overstretched means it, a particular amount of blood is only entering the heart. Then it provides the protection to the heart. Then last it, it anchors the heart to the mediastinum. It holds the heart in the mediastinum. The second layer is serous pericardium. It's a thin and more delicate membrane and it forms a double layer around the heart. Which are the two layers? The outer one is the parietal layer. This outer parietal layer is fused to the fibrous pericardium. Whereas the inner layer is the visceral layer which is adherent or attached to the surface of the heart. This is also called the inner visceral layer is also called the epicardium. Epicardium is what? It is an integral part of the heart wall. The wall of the heart. Right? So this is about the serous pericardium. Now the two layers of serous pericardium, they are continuous with each other at the roots of the great vessels. Now which great vessels? Aorta, the pulmonary vessels, the vena cava and the pulmonary veins.
Now the serous pericardium, it surrounds the slit-like pericardial cavity. It is a small space between the visceral and the parietal layers, a pericardial cavity, which is filled with the pericardial fluid. Now this is a potential space, the space between parietal and visceral, visceral layers, this is a potential space and it is filled with pericardial fluid. And what is this pericardial fluid? It consists of slippery secretions of the pericardial cells which allow the smooth movement of the two which allows the smooth movement between them when the heart beats that is when it contracts and expands so the walls what do they happen they do not they this fluid it prevents the friction between the different layers of the heart now what is this function of the peri this uh, function what is the function of pericardium Pericardium is doing what? It is a tough and inelastic tissue but it less let. Now what are the functions of the pericardium? The pericardium is tough and inelastic yet it is loose enough to allow the heart to move inside it. Rapid contraction, relaxation. Then the pericardial fluid which is present in the pericardial sac, it acts as a lubricant and it minimizes the friction between the various membranes of the heart again during the contraction and the relaxation phases. So this is about the pericardium. Now we come to the heart wall, the, the layers of the heart wall. Now the outermost layer, it is made up of three layers. The outermost layer is the outer epicardium. Right now I told you that this ep outer epicardium, it is a part of the pericardium, the inner visceral layer of the pericardium. So, this outer epicardium is actually, what? Actually a serous pericardium, right? Then the middle layer is the myocardium, which is made up of the cardiac muscle. And this myocardium layer, it is responsible for the pumping activity of the heart. When this muscle contracts, the heart contracts. When it relaxes, the heart expands or relaxes. Then this layer and moreover this myocardium, it is the thickest layer and it is the thickest at the apex and it thins towards the base. Then is the endocardium. The endocardium is the innermost layer. It is a thin layer of connective tissue and it provides a smooth lining for the inside of the heart. And this endocardium, it covers the valves of the heart. Right? So that is all about the heart wall. Then next are the chambers of the heart. There are four chambers, two atria and two ventricles. Now first we will talk about atria. Atria are called the receiving chambers. Why are they called receiving chambers? Because they are receiving the blood. Now the right atrium, it receives the deoxygenated blood from all parts of the body. And there are three main veins which supply this right atrium, the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava and the coronary sinus. Then left atrium, left atrium receives the oxygenated blood from the lungs. So because both the atria they are receiving the blood that is why they are called the receiving chambers. Now lining of both of these atria, the inner lining, it is smooth except for the some muscular ridges that is the musculi pectinati or the pectinate muscle. So that is all about the atria or the receiving chambers of the heart. Then are the ventricles, the two ventricles, right ventricle and the left ventricle. Now right side of the heart, it has deoxygenated blood. So the right ventricle has the deoxygenated blood which has come from the right atria. So this right ventricle will pump this deoxygenated blood to lungs for oxygenation right and the left ventricle the left ventricle has the oxygenated blood which it has received from the left atrium so this left ventricle it will pump its oxygenated blood to the systemic circulation to the all parts of the body from the aorta both the right and the left ventricles they contain the papillary muscles and they have these supportive cords called cordy tendony which are attached to the free edges of the atrioventricular 
valves these are the valves what are atrioventricular valves these are the valves which guide the openings between atria and the ventricles so that is all about the chambers of the heart now few features i'll tell that is the septum the septum are the partitions internally the right and the left side of heart they are separated by a septum one is interatrial septum and one is interventricular septum interatrial means between the two atria and interventricular septum is present between the two ventricles so the right side of heart it is separated from the left left side of heart by the septum there is one prominent feature in the interatrial septum that is called fossa ovalis now what is this fossa ovalis it is the site of foramen ovale now what is this foramen ovale it is an opening in the interatrial septum in the fetal heart and at the time of birth this opening closes when this opening closes the remnant of this opening is called fossa ovalis it is present between the two atria that is it is present in the interatrial septum the last feature of the heart is the valves of the heart one are the atrioventricular valves another are the semilunar valves now as the name suggests atrioventricular it's it's self explanatory it is these valves are present between the atria and the ventricles now what happens between the right atria and right ventricle and between the left atria and left ventricle the blood is flowing and it is flowing through the openings these openings are guard, guarded by the valves the atrioventricular valves right they open when the blood has to move from atria from ventricles and then they close once the ventricle is filled then another type of valves are the semilunar valves the semilunar valves are present in the at the opening of the aorta and the pulmonary vessels the pulmonary semilunar valve and the aortic valve these are the two semilunar valves the pulmonary semilunar valve is present at the opening of the pulmonary artery pulmonary semilunar valve is present at the opening of the pulmonary artery and it allows the movement of blood from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery and the aortic valve is present at the opening of aorta and it permits the movement of blood from the left ventricle to the aorta and why are they called semilunar because their shape is half moon shape that's all about the structure of the heart in my next video i'll be explaining the physiology of the heart please subscribe my channel so that you can complete your course of anatomy and physiology with me thank you have a nice day